Okay. Um, I know you wrote me this lovely little bit, but I've just been asking people how you came to the labyrinth or did it come to you? The labyrinth came to me in the form of jacquard woven ribbon while I was working at the Smithsonian's National Design Museum. I'm always being interested in textiles. My sister-in-law, Laura Foster Nicholson, sent me all the different colorways of labyrinth ribbon that she had made. And I don't know anything about labyrinths. And I thought, we just bought our property in New Mexico and there's no rain, there's no water in New Mexico. And I looked at the ribbon and thought, perfect garden for New Mexico, it doesn't need water, I'll make one. So I chose one of the 11 patterns, cut it, cut it out of the ribbon, pinned it to my gardening glove, and made what I now know is a medieval labyrinth. That's lovely. <clears throat> and, and then you went on to apply the labyrinth in terms of your horses. And horse. I did. I did. did. I built a few more labyrinths on my land before that because I wanted to know what other labyrinths felt. And when I made my labyrinth, it taught me a lesson. I thought it was just a pretty thing, a nice design. I work in a design museum. But it taught me patience. And so I thought, oh, there's something about these labyrinths. And so I made another couple. And then one day I was riding in the mountains because I live at the west entrance to the Gila wilderness and I I and my horse had been out all day. We were both tired. And so I rode straight across the labyrinth instead of around it back to the corral. And my tired horse p picked up himself and his attention and arched his neck and lifted his feet. And I thought, wonderful training opportunity for a horse. I'll do that tomorrow. And so I s jumped on his back the next day and, and and made him follow the horses. I ride trails, so there were lessons I could teach him in the labyrinth also about how to ride trail. And he's become very flexible, very careful. And when he gets to the center, he just relaxes and his eyes half close and he starts licking his lips and he does a big sigh and he gets labyrinths. And now he walks them by himself. If I let them out to graze in the grasses, he walks them by himself. Whereas my funny little horse just goes, of oh, grass. I think I'll eat that bit of grass. Plonk, plonk, plonk. But he's learning. Wow. Now, have you used them as therapy? Oh, yes. And how have you done that? Well, I, in various ways, I lead visiting groups of people. And so, we, I lead them or I show them or I tell them there's no wrong way, it's just many right ways, do whatever you like. Um, I teach yoga, so I introduce them to Hester Mudra's hand yoga that they can do in the labyrinth. We also put a maypole in the middle of one of my labyrinths and dance the maypole, which she makes for joyfulness and Beltane. And that happens to be Mother's Day. And I do use my big gray horse, Blake. I, nobody else can ride him, he bucks and he's difficult to ride. But he's very calm on the ground. He's huge. Um, he's 16 hands too. Mm -hmm. And so he comes, his withers come up to my head. And so he's a big presence, but a gentle giant. Mm -hmm. He's just a gentle giant. And one day somebody was in the labyrinth, their body language was all kind of a clay. And so I thought, I think I'll go and get Blake. I think I'll go and get my horse and see if that makes any difference. So I have a mirrored labyrinth, especially for riding lots of horses in. And I, the woman was one side and I took my horse into the other side and timed it with her, but I got to the circle first. And she asked permission to come in and said, may I touch the horse? I've never touched a horse. And so I just said, well, hold out your hand and let him sniff you and he'll know what's happening with you. And then you can just be with him. And she ended up never having touched a horse, weeping in his mane and pulling hairs out of his tail, <laughs> which I thought, oh, uh. but I hope he doesn't kick, but he didn't. He said, good horse. So now I, I use him. I never planned to. He's very high-spirited Arabian. 
Yes, it works. You hosted, you and your brother mm -hmm. hosted the gathering in New Harmony. Yes. Which it was one of, it's. I think it's my personal favorite. It was only the second I'm, one I went I'm to, just, but I thought it was just absolutely the most delightful uh, thing I'd ever seen, including the maypole. Yes. In the, in the granary. Yes. And whose idea was it to just tell us all, when you're done walking the maypole, just line up down the stairs? <laughs> because there was, a, there was a concert next morning and we had to get all the pumpkins out and there were 160 or more of them. We had to get all the pumpkins out, many more than 160. The pumpkins had to be out that night and it was already late at night. It was an evening maypole dance. So I, there'd just been terrible floods where I live. A river had overflowed and flooded. So I knew all about sand, making sandbags and fire, fire bucket lines. So I just organized everybody into a fire bucket line. And we, in Indiana, they call it lumping pumpkins when you have to move pumpkins. So we just unraveled the labyrinth by passing pumpkins down the fire bucket line and Ben was down in the yard with a truck so we just trucked and all of us and we kind sang of we had a sing song didn't we I don't I don't know yes, I was laughing so hard because all of us were going wait a minute I didn't know we were doing it <laughs> well we did we thought everyone would leave if we told them <laughs> you were probably right and I, I persuade we had a, a band that played Irish jigs and things they were a string band upstairs um, for us to dance the labyrinth to and things and I said could you just play jigs that keep people moving just keep them moving keep them moving make time with the pumpkins and the pumpkins will make time with you <laughs> it worked it was brilliant yeah. and we all loved it we had a great time yes the photographs are nice smiling faces another thing I remember about that gathering was the, the horse labyrinth that you built yes out in the arena yes can you tell me about that? That is a story. Is it all right to tell you a story? Of course. That's what we're here for. <laughs> we love the stories. Um, when Ben, my brother, and I realized that we were expected to manage the gathering, the gathering was a year hence, and I had been asked by TLS to do a half-day horse workshop. So I thought, well, I'm not bringing my horse. I need to find a horse. So we contacted the local saddle club, and. Ben said, well, my sister's coming. She needs to borrow a horse to ride in the labyrinth. And they said, well, can she ride? What's a labyrinth? Mm -hmm. So I flew up and they brought four horses for me to ride to prove I could ride. And we built them, a, we laid them a chalk classic labyrinth. And then I rode each of their horses into the labyrinth. And they're very excellent riders. So they immediately saw the value of this the flexibility and the attention and the calm in the middle and so they got on their cell phones and they called all their friends so in the end we had 24 horses and 18 riders and Ben and I both knew of the Etruscan vase with this the, which depicts the siege of Troy around it and the two warriors bringing Aeneas out of the the labyrinthine walls as a classic labyrinth and two warriors coming out and Ben and I knew that image. And we also knew that in Virgil's Aeneid, he describes the game of Troy, where there's a historic reenactment of the siege of Troy, and very flowering language. And Ben and I looked at each other and said, should we do a reenactment of the siege of Troy? I wonder if they will. So we asked them if they'd do that, and they didn't know what we were talking about. And they said, oh, for sure, we just need to train. So I said, we said, well, we need to figure out what we're going to do. And I didn't know what kind of labyrinth to build that we could do that. And Jeff Sauer designed me a mirrored classic labyrinth. It had to be classic because of the, the bars. And so Jeff designed that. And then Jeff read Virgil as we rode the labyrinth. And it was like synchronized swimming. We, we'd all trained, so we kind of come in and go around and go around and come in and go around. And, and then we went into the middle circle with our spears flashing, <laughs> according to Virgil, uh, swapped sides and then came out again. I <clears throat> had read somewhere that that kind of training, Troy Town, yes. riding horses, was a, a kind of training 
not only for the riders to control the horses, but also to get the horses used to going past one another. And between doing... each other, between horses. They're fine passing each other. You usually pass on the left, and that's what horses are trained to do normally. But we needed the horses to go between each other, and you don't usually ride between each other. Um, so the horses had somebody coming at them from each side. And we had to make the paths of the labyrinth wide enough, A, for our horse, our legs, and our, our fenders, and B, so the horses weren't freaked out. So we made 48-inch wide paths so that there was room for the horses to pass and intertwine and, and so on. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to the workshop. I'll have to admit, horses mostly terrify me, so you can talk me out oh, of that sometime. Oh, you come visit. When I come and visit, yes. yes. But there was, <clears throat> there. I remember standing on a hill and watching down below. There was a young girl, do you remember her? She was on crutches. Yes. Can you tell us what that was about? I do remember her a bit. Was it, didn't Jeff take her, he had his bicycle? And she was, no, I do remember, I do remember one of the young girls in the riding team um, saw this girl on crutches and lifted her up onto the horse, onto her, her horse and led her around the labyrinth. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, we were all in tears on the, yes. because she was so excited. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So I made a, a movie about horses being used therapeutically in a labyrinth. There's a couple of places I've been to, and one of the places I went to film was working with people with physical disabilities riding the horses. Another place I went to was working with people with mental difficulties or something wrong and they were leading the horses around one of the people i filmed had been incarcerated and they had matched her up with an abused horse mm. who was terrified of everything and by the time we got there she'd worked with the horse for two years and she could ride him without a saddle and bridle and it took the horse almost all of that two years to have the courage to come out of the labyrinth and so she had started riding him in a halter, at any rate, outside the labyrinth. It was beautiful to watch both of them. The recovery was amazing. So the horse would ride in the labyrinth, but wouldn't exit it? Wouldn't, it felt safe. It was too frightened to come out. Um, you, you had to give it carrots so that it would follow to come out. Once it had gone in, it just didn't want to leave. That's lovely. So, yes. So this is this is my time. <clears throat> I always ask this question, and she's heard it seven times in the last two days. And that is, oftentimes when we part, we reflect back and we go, "Oh, I wish I would have said," or "I wish we would have asked." So this is our chance to take a second and think about that, remembering that this uh, interview will, or portions of it will make it into the twentieth anniversary book. Mm -hmm. So, if there's anything else you want to share or offer at this time, now is the time. There's so much. <laughs> um, one of the things, we live so remotely. We live four hours from any airport, 72 miles from the bank and the grocery. And one of the things I capture and, and give to people is the space and the quiet. I, I make, if they come from cities, you know, they start walking fast. And I, I say, just listen, listen, listen. There's nothing to hear except the ravens and maybe my horses. Um, so I think, I think giving people peace is one thing I like to do. I teach yoga workshops and things in my labyrinth um, also. How many do you have? I've got five labyrinths, all different, and I've laid out a, a maze in plan, just with white rocks, um, so that people, you can tell people the difference between walking a maze and a labyrinth, but they don't get it till they've done it. And I have on film people calmly walking the labyrinth, and then they get in the maze and they're going, and where, where do I go, where do I go? I've kept the grass long in the maze so that they can't really see. 
but that's a nice thing to be able to give them. Oh, my whole, I remade the Troy ride, the, the, uh, the Labyrinth, we did the, uh, in New Harmony. I wanted it when I got home. So what I had plenty of is horse manure. So I've made it out of horse manure with horseshoes on top. It's 90 feet across with a 40 foot center circle. And it's a seven circuit, kind of 14 circuit <laughs> labyrinth. And it's all made of horse manure. And some people come up to it and say, Ugh. <laughs> and some people say, how beautiful. <laughs> For an equine labyrinth, horseshoes and horse manure. And I remember very clearly too, um, the pancake breakfast. Oh yes, yes, yes. I, I have um, the American Legion made a pancake breakfast for everybody one morning. And we, we had the local ironmonger make a, a brand as a, a five circuit classic labyrinth. And so all the pancakes were branded before they were served. I have that, I have that at home. So I remember there was a woman, I mentioned it on Facebook, and a woman wrote to me and said, where do I where get do I one? Get and that's where I asked you, and you said, oh, well, you talk to an ironmonger. And I'm like, wow, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know any. <laughs> oh. Monger is not a word that comes up very often. Well, Fishmongers, not in, not important. ironmongers. Oh. It just means to make things. I know. Yeah, okay. Yes. Well, I guess I live near horseshoes and yeah, ranches, I'm, and I used to live in Manhattan. So there's railings. <laughs> I think I'm used to iron. <laughs> well, it's very useful where you are now. Yes, it is. It is. So, anything else that we can? I, I think we I think of? that is really, really quite good. But I might ask once you get home, since I have your email address, to share a photograph or maybe access to your videos if they're up. Are they up on YouTube or?